Hello again and welcome to a new Vectorworks document. This one is already pretty lovely, but what we're going to do is correct a few of the areas that we've left here for you just as a learning experience. You can see here the bricks are sort of white, this texture is not mapped as you might expect it would be, and uh, these lights are currently not on. We'll be able to turn those on at the end of this. To start with, go to the Save Views list and choose One, Applying Textures. We'll start there. The Save View has cleared away a couple things that are just not important to this example. The first thing we'll do is show you how to apply textures. Uh, Vectorworks comes with a few standard textures in this document as well, has a few built into it. So hold Alt or Option down and click on the Collapse button here in the Resource Browser. Make sure you're in top level. And in here we want to expand Render Textures. Scroll down to the very bottom. And you should see one called White Gray Rock RT. Click and drag that onto one of these stones here. Pick this top one. There you are. Texture applied. This one has no texture. This one has a texture. You can also get to it by clicking on one more of these stones, holding shift, and selecting another so we have both of them selected, and then simply double clicking the texture. That'll apply it to any of the objects that we currently have selected that'll take a texture. Go to the basic palette and click on the select similar tool. And then in the preferences, make sure you do object type, have that checked and class, have that checked as well. Click OK. And click on one of these stones. We already class these stones separately, so you can see here under the Shape tab, these are in class, Fire Pit Stones. So these extrudes, which are all these are, in that class are all we were selected when we use the Select Similar tool. And now go to the Render tab at the Object Info Palette. And for the texture, currently it's blank. That's because these have no texture applied to them, but we have other objects in the selection, these three in front, that do have a texture, so it leaves it blank to show you that there's multiple values assigned. We're just going to click this texture drop-down menu and apply this to all the objects at the same time. And those are the basic three ways to apply textures to objects directly. You can also do it by class, which is very useful in case you want to apply, add more objects to that class later, so that all of them, when they come into that class, just take on that texture. To do that first, we'll go ahead and turn off these Fire Pit Stones class in the Navigation Palette. Turn off the Fire Pit Stones class, set that to invisible, it'll disappear. Now we have this object here, which is the mortar inside the bricks. We could select this object directly and do it, but we're going to demo how to do it via the class. See this object currently has its, under the Render tab, it's an extrude, and it has the texture Class Texture. And this object is in the Fire Pit Dash Mortar class. So go to Tools, Organization, and under the Classes tab, Scroll down to the Fire Pit Mortar class, select it, and click Edit. Once you're in here, go to the Other tab. Other is for texturing anything that is not a wall or a roof. If you don't have a wall or a roof, it's if it's just a extrude or just solid subtractions, it'll be in the Other class that you want to use. Check this box, and then change this texture to the Stone Mortar texture. Click OK here, and click OK here. Now you can see it only applied that to the top of the object. And that's a very common problem to come across. Under the Render tab, you'll have an option for Part. Most objects that don't just have one surface have an option for a part. Click this. You can see that the overall class is set to Class Texture, but the sides are set to None. We can change this one of two ways. We can ch choose the sides, so now we're editing the sides, which has a None and give this a texture. We can separate the two textures, so now I can click between these two. You can see that the overall will use class and the sides will use the asterisk 2 texture. Or, with this sides part collect selected, I can click revert to overall. And now, both the top, bottom, and sides will all use the overall texture, which is currently set to class. Now this pane in general, the render pane, when you have the object selected, in this case an extrude, this is just changing what's called the texture mapping. We're not actually modifying the texture and we're not modifying the object. We're just modifying, in this one instance, how this texture interacts with this object. So for this, we can grab the scale bar and we could resize this if we want to. Scale it up and scale it way down. Now, you might notice that this looks like this is the appropriate way to apply this texture. And when we have it at a scale of one, you can see a repetition. That's just because we're in OpenGL. If you ever want to make sure that the mapping of a texture is correct and is going to look correct in RenderWorks modes, 
make sure to give it a quick test render. So we'll go to View, Rendering, and just choose Fast Render Works really briefly. Give that just a second. See how in OpenGL we had a pattern, but here we don't. Nice and smooth. It just looks like a grainy mortar. That's perfect. That's just what we wanted. We don't even have to wait for that to finish. We'll go right back to OpenGL to do our texturing work. So always make sure to check between the two versions. Do you see how almost all of these textures look slightly different in RenderWorks as they did in, in OpenGL? Always make sure to check that briefly while you're doing the texture work. Now, that's the more direct object info palette way of modifying the mapping of a texture, but there's a more hands-on way as well. We're going to go ahead and hide this mortar now, so in hide the fire pit mortar class. Now we're just going to select this object down here. This is just another extrude that's some sand at the bottom. There's a different way we can map this. We could use the object info palette, and we could use these controls, but there's a more interactive way. In the basic tool palette, there's a tool called attribute mapping, and it's going to ask me to pick a mapping type when I click that. Only these three types work with attribute mapping, so that auto-align plane option we used for the other one wouldn't be allowed here. But since we just have a flat surface, we'll just use plane and click yes. You can see here that it changed the mapping. So what it did here is we were seeing that same striation on the mortar earlier. It's picked the side by default, but we don't want that. So we'll click once. You see the cursor has this click finger and then a square. It wants you to click the plane you want to map to, which is this plane right here. Now you see this little sample. This is showing a little sample of what the actual texturing will be. If we click away, you can see the texture is still mapped that way. Click attribute mapping again, and it resumes the same place it was. Now this sand is a little large. This is a little unnecessarily huge, so we don't want to see that all the time. And we also want to see what it's going to look like on the extra outside area of it. We don't just want to see our little mapping area. So click to the second mode. And you'll get to see the repetition the whole time, and anytime you click and drag inside that widget, you'll drag the whole thing. Now, two things. One is just a little optical illusion trick. Whenever you have textures, and you'll see it if we make this texture smaller, you'll have a repetition. The smaller you make the texture mapping, the more obvious that repetition is. Do you see how it's very obvious to see this grid here? Clicking the corners of the attribute mapping, by the way, scales it. So if I were to click these corners, this selection indicator, this, this diagonal 45 degree cursor, that one just shows we're resizing it. If you click on the straight edges, you'll see a different cursor. That controls rotation. Try to not aim the lineup of a texture right at the viewer. It'll be far less obvious if you turn the alignment just slightly to the side, slightly a different direction, and then adjust the scaling. Remember, this is sand, so it was very large before. So we're going to want to set this to a scale probably around 0.5 is fine. 0.5 is fine for this. This is also good for, you can use this to see, OK, what would it look like at this size? And then you can see, oh, that's scaling 1.0. And what would it look like at this size? And that's scaling around 0.5. You can use that to check it later, either here or right here on the floating data bar next to the cursor. You can see what scale you've actually got it set to. Now for this texture, it doesn't matter where it starts. But if this was brick or something, uh, like tile that we wanted to repeat, clicking once inside here will let us set where that starts. So we can set where a texture starts and where it ends. But for the sand, we're not too particularly interested in getting that lined up anywhere. Now we'll turn that fire pit back on, turn back the mortar, turn on the stones again, go back to the selection tool, and we'll just render this in final quality so we can see what we ended up with. There we are, nice and crisp. In the next video, we'll show creating a texture from scratch.